A very good evening and welcome to St. Peter's Church here in Mount Rath. I'm once again in our beautiful side chapel here in the church and a very warm welcome to this service of the late evening office and our service begins on page 162 of the prayer book. Blessed be our God for all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit, Comforter, treasure of all goodness and giver of life. Come and dwell in us. Cleanse us from all sin, and in your love bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Psalm 134, let us recite together. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at the 22nd verse. <clears throat> Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our daily newspapers, there's still the wee uh, cartoons uh, that uh, appear in them. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the Far Side Gallery by Gary Larson, an American cartoonist. Uh, some of his cartoons are very, very witty. Uh, indeed, an awful lot of them seem to feature uh, cows. Now, I'm not quite sure if, if this one, maybe I'm incorrectly attributing it to him, but it seems like something that he would draw, but the, 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 the box, the cartoon, featured a, a large billboard and on it it says, Welcome to Australia where everything can kill you. And beside the uh, billboard is a rather bemused and very friendly uh, looking koala. Now I, I know many Australians themselves find it amusing the attitude uh, those of us in the other hemisphere uh, have uh, towards Australia. This belief that it's full of poisonous snakes, poisonous uh, spiders, um, other various things, crocodiles, etc., etc., that uh, can potentially uh, attack you and kill you. I mean, there are many parts of the world where things are exactly the same. But as I say, uh, Australians themselves are, are, are amused by, by, by that. Uh, but why I mention that particular cartoon and why it came to me when I was uh, reading uh, this evening's scripture there, um, 
is that uh, there are, are a couple of reasons why I've never been to Australia. One is the uh, belief that there's all uh, lots and lots of very big spiders uh, there. I don't particularly like spiders, so I'm not rushing to uh, fly off to Australia to meet the, the funnel web spider, whatever uh, name it's called. But uh, the reality is uh, for me that one of the main reasons that I wouldn't travel as far as Australia. It's just the length of time of being stuck on a plane. I know for those who have visited Australia, it can be a real marathon uh, journey indeed. And for those visiting family or friends, uh, it really can, can knock you for six. I'm sure uh, those who travel are probably used to it. And of course, nowadays, um, with the improvement in airport facilities in various parts of the world, journeys like this uh, are, aren't so uh, straining on people. You can get off the plane and wander around places such as Dubai or, or Singapore uh, and so on. But the reality for me is that I, I, I don't like flying at all. And as I, I say, I don't like uh, spiders. Now, lots of us have various uh, different fears. Uh, some people uh, are, are afraid of dogs. Uh, some people are, are afraid of cats and so on. Some people uh, don't like heights and so on. These are, are the things that make us uh, human. And, and God isn't disappointed in us in any way, shape or, or form uh, when we have uh, these uh, fears. But he doesn't want us to be consumed by them. And what I, I mean by that is uh, the reality, as I say, part of our, our humanness. For some, maybe we've had a negative experience of dogs when we were, were, were quite young and, and so as we grow up uh, we have a natural uh, tendency to be cautious around them or, or indeed very very fearful of them and that's a reality for many people and we shouldn't uh, dismiss that or minimise that uh, with people in any uh, way at all. Uh, it wouldn't be right uh, to say to, to someone, oh sure, look, it's only a, a chihuahua, it's not going to kill you or something. That's not right to, to put down someone in, in, in that way. And likewise with my, myself, with, with spiders or, or airplanes, there's no point in telling me that um, a, a, a spider is not going to, to kill me because deep down, deep down we, we, we know that, but still for whatever reason, uh, we have these fears indeed. But as I say, the Lord doesn't want us to be consumed uh, by that. He doesn't want us to spend every waking hour being uh, afraid uh, uh, to go anywhere, to be afraid to make any journey purely and simply that we might meet a dog or indeed a, a spider. Likewise, he doesn't want me to spend every waking hour searching everywhere I am. Indeed, I'm sure in the, the church here there are plenty of little uh, spiders in various nooks and, uh, and crannies, but you can't get to the stage where you're searching every place or won't sit down uh, for fear of spiders and that, that, that is wrong. That's not the way uh, Jesus wishes us uh, to be. So the example there uh, of Peter is, is a fascinating and a very interesting one because seeing the Lord they are uh, afraid because He's walking on the sea. And naturally, if, if we see something such as that, it is going to, my God, because this is something that no one's seen before. And uh, with, with the storm raging and to see someone suddenly coming to you upon the water, uh, fishermen at the time and even still today are very superstitious. So there was, you know, what, what is this? What are we witnessing here? Is it an omen, a portent, or indeed, as they uh, say in the gospel there, they, they assume it, it, it's a ghost. Then when the Lord calls out to them, Peter uh, responds. And interestingly enough, he's desirous, despite everything, the tumult that is uh, going on around them, this awful sea storm, he still wishes uh, to get out and to go to Jesus. And Jesus says, come. And so Peter does. He steps out of the boat, an incredible act of faith, and walks uh, across. And we're told that he comes to Jesus. And then suddenly his humanity comes crashing down, looking all around him at this tempest, the, the storm. And for those few moments that when he saw Jesus spoke with him, got out of the boat and walked towards him, he was focused on the Lord. His, his focus was very much on Christ, on, on, on Jesus. And that gave him the power and the strength to overcome any natural fears or anxieties or worries about the storm and to walk 
uh, toward Jesus. But as soon as he began to waver and take his focus off the Lord, then we're told that he begins to sink. And again, Jesus' response to that is very interesting indeed. When he says to them, him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Uh, Jesus isn't trying to embarrass him or shame him or, or mock him in any way, way, shape, or form. Not in the slightest uh, at all. It's just a response from, from the heart. Why, why did you, you doubt? Sure, you saw me. Uh, I'm here with you. I, I called out to you. And that is very much uh, how Jesus wishes us uh, to, uh, to approach our lives of faith, to approach our, our life uh, with God to keep the focus on the Lord, to stay focused on Jesus and the wonderful things that will happen in our lives and take place. And we can live truly free lives without the anxiety or the minor worries around us. So at the time of great anxiety and stress, this time of the coronavirus, let's try and keep focused on the Lord, that the Lord is ever present, a light burning in the darkness for each and every one of us, that he is there with us and that Ultimately, he will reach out his hand to us uh, when we need it, when we call out to him. He is there to stretch out his hand, to lift us out of our fears, our darkness, and to set us back on our feet. Amen. The Nunc Dimittis again let us recite together. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayers let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all Christian people that they may live in love and truth. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all ministers of the church and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for peace throughout the world and for all governments. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our neighbours and for all our friends. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hate us as we pray for those who love us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for refugees and prisoners and for all who are exposed to the dangers of travel. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and hungry may receive a just share. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray for all sick people. We pray in a special way at this time for those who are worried, those who are anxious, those who are afraid. We ask the Lord to wrap his loving arms around them, to reach out to them and to calm their fears and their anxieties. We pray for those in hospital at this time, for those in our nursing homes. And we give thanksgiving for those who work so hard all our medical teams, all medical personnel, and indeed the medical scientists looking for a vaccine for the coronavirus. Lord, we ask you to bless the efforts and the work of their hands. We pause for a moment to remember in the silence of our hearts those who have asked us to pray for them. Likewise, we bring to the Lord our own uh, thoughts and prayers at this time, the prayers of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Let us remember our brothers and sisters who have entered into eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God, blessed this night and for evermore. Amen. Just before the final blessing, to remind you that uh, on Friday evening we will have um, evening prayer online from the church here in St. Peter's and morning prayer on Sunday. So again, to wish you all the very best, keep safe and well, and with the help of God, please God, soon we will once again be able to return to common worship, to come together as a community, as a parish family, uh, to pray and to support one another. But in the meantime, we continue to use the means of the internet as a way of reaching out to our brothers and sisters in the community, to the other members of our parish or indeed parishes across the the island and pray for one another uh, for the help of God to bless and to strengthen us all. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit bless and keep us. Amen. <laughs>